All right, so as is nearly always the case with these projects I set out to do, this has turned into a two-parter. As you've probably noticed, um, I released these just a day apart. I didn't fancy releasing the other one and then making people wait like two weeks for it. So I got the whole job done in one, made both videos at the same time and then just stuck them both out at more or less the same time. It was originally going to be one, but in the edit it became evident that it was just going to be far too long. So this is part two, putting it all back together. All right, we're going back to the Mazda. Now, I was hoping to have the parts a bit sooner. This has been a quite a while, quite a while, several weeks in fact, since I've touched this. But the new bit has arrived. Well, it's not new, new. It's off a, another guy's Mazda. He had the same engine, and he somehow managed to blow the head gasket on it, so he put a new engine in it, um, and then it was breaking down the old one. So we got this. If we can't compare it to. The old one, and see, it is in much better condition. All of this orange and there's a corrosion on the inside is a little concerning. We don't have any of that on the new one. Turn over, and you can see inside there, compared to inside that one, it's like night and day. The offending bit of it. Is also in much better condition. It does have a little bit of corrosion on this elbow here. I was hoping to have some K rust to put on that, but I haven't had a chance to get any. But what I'm going to do is probably just fit it, and before I put everything completely back together, we can apply some K rust later. But I want to try and get on with this now, yeah, so that can go away to scrap and get the new one on. Got a gasket for it as well. The gasket is also a little concerning because it's somewhat different. It's a metal one and it's a different shape. You can see there. I mean, it fits, it goes all around the edge, but you see that outlet is a different shape. It's also a different material. The old one, there's a piece of the old one that came away was this sort of papery stuff, like it just breaks up. Whereas this is a metal one. Hold them up together. They don't match. Now, they do change parts occasionally, do manufacturers, if there's a problem. So this may be okay. It's a, it's a good 30 mile drive to the nearest Mazda dealership. I couldn't get these anywhere. I went to my nearest parts store, it's about nine miles away, they couldn't source one. Went out to Euro Car Parts, they couldn't source one either. And I finally went over to the Mazda dealership and they were able to order me one in. But yeah, if we offer it up to that. I mean, it looks like it will probably seal, but it doesn't look quite right. And there's bits of gasket on here still that look like they were a much better fit. So it's a bit concerning. If we look at this other one as well, it's the same. The bits of gasket go all the way to the edge of the little hole. So, hmm, I'm going to give them a ring and see. So what I don't want to do is fit this fucking thing, put the whole car back together, start it up, and water just pisses out everywhere. That would be less than ideal. It does match up to the bolt holes, and the guy showed me the parts diagram. It is the right gasket, but they've clearly made some changes. All right, but plan for today is we need to get it down there. I think there's bits of gasket still on the side of the block that need to be cleaned off, but hopefully it's just a matter of bolting everything back together, filling it up with coolant, and away we go. <laughs> hopefully, anyway. But it is a gorgeous day. It's fucking roasting here, standing over this car. There are rain clouds on the horizon, so we're going to get done what we can for now. Yeah, if it starts pissing it down, we'll have to stop. <sighs> okay, let's get going. Put that out of the way for me. The other thing with it taking so long is I need to try and remember where all these frigging nuts and bolts went. 
when I started doing this, I rather foolishly thought I'd be able to easily get the parts, and it took fucking weeks to get the right part. But they should be fairly self-explanatory. I mean, all they're all different sizes, so if it fits, that's probably where it's meant to go. I also can't remember what I did with the power steering pump belt, but never mind. So, the hole on this, in that in shot, is obviously round. The hole on the side of the block is square. So that might be appropriate. So let's lean down and have a look. What is it, Bella? Mm. All right, so it fits over the little hole on the side of the block quite nicely. I'm oil all over myself already. Look. Yeah, I feel around it now. Bits of it are just coming off in my hand, but it doesn't fit perfectly over the hole anyway, so I'd say that shape of gasket is probably normal. Another thing that's happened, whilst it's been stood, and it ain't been stood that long, battery is completely flat. As in, it was 0.33 volts, which is very concerning because this hasn't been stood that long, only a couple of weeks. So I wouldn't have expected it to be flat at all, and yet it is. And the Corsa that's directly behind me was stood for five years and that still had two volts in the battery. So the question is, how on earth has it gotten so low, so quick possible, there's a drain? Now, either I left something on. I mean, I didn't close the bonnet fully this whole time, but there's still like bonnet lights in here. Unless I'm being really blind. Uh, the interior light, it wasn't on. The only other thing is there's an aftermarket stereo in it. Maybe that causes a drain. Maybe the battery's just that fecked, but I still wouldn't have expected it to drop down to 0.3 volts. It's on charge again now, but that might be a new problem for another day. Right, let's go and get something to help clean this gasket off. Oh, I thought I had a little wire brush somewhere, but Christ knows what's happened to that. I swear my shit just goes missing constantly. I did, however, find... Rustmaster. So we'll do a bit of research on that before we go and slap it all over our new part. But I might not need to buy any now. That'd be quite handy. I also found. Got my brake cleaner. Nearly empty. May or may not need it for this, but it's good to have. And of course, my cup of coffee. Which should fit right in there. Look at that. Japanese make wonderful cars. You can just fit a cup of coffee right in the engine bay. Right, if I can't find this wire brush, I might just use the edge of a screwdriver. Another tool that I'm using is this. This is actually a woodworking tool. I've had it a few years now. I went and left it in the shed and it started to rust, but it won't affect how it works. It's called a cat's paw. It's used for removing nails from pieces of wood. You sort of, you put that next to the nail, hammer it in, and then you use it to lever the nail out. You can do a similar thing with that end as well. But, yeah, if you've got a nail or those sort of barbed nails that are designed to go in and stay in, this will get them out for you. I'm hoping to use the edge to help scrape this um, this gasket off because it's pretty well stuck on there. Because yeah. I can't find my anything sharper. I don't know where I've put my fucking chisels. All my wire brushes are so a bit stuck. Most places I can't really get access to this either, which is also annoying. Now by that, 
before anyone pipes on about using brake cleaner in this area, this stuff will just evaporate and be gone. I'm not worried about having brake cleaner running around my cooling system, it will be gone. And besides, looking at some of the components, it can't get any fucking worse. That's good coffee. Well, the half very kindly bought me some coffee, even though they don't like coffee. They're working on the um, military base, American military base. And you can occasionally get me some quite exotic stuff. This isn't especially on exotic, but you can't buy it here. It's a Black Rifle Coffee Company. I'm not the biggest fans of the people that run it, but to be fair to them, that's fucking nice coffee. So if you have the opportunity to buy some of it, I do recommend it. Why won't you come off, you twat? Yeah, most of the gasket is gone and the face of it is all nice and lovely and shiny. There's a bit around the bottom bolt hole that's proving really quite stubborn. And it's slowly coming away, but I can't get under it. It could well be the original, but it's pretty stuck on there. It being the original would probably explain why it's so difficult to get off. If you in my nice wire brush that I can't find, would probably make light work of it. Unfortunately, it's fucking nowhere to be found, so... I wonder if sandpaper will tackle it. Let's try that. Right, just a little bit. Let's see if this works. It's that frigging rock hard. It feels almost like it's meant to be that shit. Probably invest in some of those little pinwheels and sanding discs for me drill. But it's just more money, and it's money I don't fucking have right now, so I'll have to do it the old manual way. Another tractor coming. Same one that went past a minute ago, he must have forgotten something. <laughs> Whoops. Getting there. That's all. Who would have thought a paper gasket could cause this much trouble? And there was me hoping this will be a nice, simple job. Just a nice simple job of just bolting everything back together, filling it up with coolant, and going out for a nice drive. Yeah. That would have been too fucking easy. Where's it go? Try and soften it for a bit. I'll have to get some more of that. Yeah, 
Yeah, and the problem I've got, there is, it's the thinnest piece now, because I've worn it down. But there's a section, I'll show you on this other part. So if we look on here, this sits that way up. You know, it's, it's these bits of gasket that won't come off. Just like they won't come off of this bit fully. This bit's going in the bin, so it doesn't matter. But along this bottom edge, a section of this has stayed stuck to the block. And the problem with that is, when you then put the new part and the new gasket on, you've got two flat edges, but it creates an uneven edge. Now, I've worn it smooth to the point where you wouldn't even see it when you first look at it, but when you run your finger over it, you can feel it, it's there. Now, when I bolt this on really tightly, chances are the gasket will make a good seal and we won't have any issues. But I don't want to take the risk because it was such a pain in the ass taking this apart. I want it to be right going back together. So we're going to let it soak in brake cleaner. Our new part needs a similar sort of cleaning doing, so we're going to do that in the meantime. That's easier to clean because you can hold it in your hand. And hopefully we can get it cleaned off. Fucking tiniest little bit of gasket, and it's given us all this delay. Could have had the thing bolted in by now. See, this is the problem that I've got. These bits of gasket that are left behind, and there's the same on the block. These need to come off, because they'll stop you forming a seal with the new gasket. And the problem is, is I go at it with a screwdriver, and I can scrape bits of it off, but not really. If I go at it with sandpaper, it doesn't really do anything. All oh, fucking delays. I hate cars, I really do. Well, that's a disappointing start. I'm currently on a five day weekend. It's Jubilee weekend, and what are you doing, Bella? Stop eating rocks. Give me that rock. Drop it. Bella? Bella? Give me the rock. Good girl. Don't eat your stones, fucking idiot. Anyway, yeah, I'm on a five-day weekend. It's currently Jubilee weekend. Well, it's not yet, it's Wednesday, but because I actually have a... I'm lucky enough to have a decent employer, I was able to swing myself a five-day weekend, as have most people, actually. Yeah, I was really hoping to spend this five days and get this car going, maybe even get the Corsa going, which I'm working on simultaneously with this. But it's now half past two in the afternoon on day one of my five-day weekend, and we've achieved fuck all in, like, yeah two and a bit hours of working on this. I was a bit busy this morning with other things. Great fucking start. I'm going to wait until my other half comes back. They're out at work at the moment. And then I'm going to go down to the nearest town. There's an auto shop there. I'll see if they've got any tools. Um, I just specifically want those little pinwheels and sanding discs that you can put on the end of a drill. I think that's going to be the fastest and easiest way of cleaning these gasket remnants off before I do that though before I pack everything away completely I'm just going to have a bit of a play around inside the car see if I can identify the battery drain alright gently getting in partly because I have a fat ass and this is a tiny car and partly because it's actually stood up on axle stands All right, so Jubilee weekend was a bit of a bust. Well, in terms of working on the car, it was anyway. I ended up doing other things. Went to see a parade and uh, just did other fun things with my partner. Um, so, yeah, the car didn't get fixed in the end. Um, but I have got the tool that I need, kind of anyway. So we've got this. 
Now, it's not the one I wanted. They do another one that's sort of a flat disc with the prongs on the end. That's the one I wanted, but they didn't have any. So we've got this one instead. This should be enough to get all these bits of gasket off. If it doesn't, then Christ knows what we're gonna do. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna give that a go. Um, we'll start by doing it on the actual part at the mill because it's quite breezy today. So yeah, I've come into the back garden where it's a bit more sheltered because the breeze is just screwing up the audio. Um, also, I've got this nice new workbench that I wanted to try on. So we'll do this bit here and if it works out all right, we'll go out front and attack the car. All right, so first things first, let's get this wound in. That's not good anyway. So, we shall choose high speed and maximum torque. Not that I think that's going to make any difference, but high speed. And then we're just going to gently run this across it and see if it starts taking this off. We're looking for a nice, smooth, shiny surface on here. Again, I'm not sure this style of brush is going to work. We might end up having to go out and get the flat disc one that I wanted originally. But yeah, oh, I've just noticed it says. Maximum 4,500 RPM. I've got no idea how fast this spins, but whatever. Let's see what happens. Well, it's doing it. It keeps catching on the end and jerking me out of the way. I don't know if you can see it on there. Angle the camera in a bit better. It's taking it off. Let's keep going with it. doing the job it's not doing it as quickly as I would hope it's just going to show how tough these bits of gasket are and the head of it's holding up quite nicely too all right let's keep going Better angle. Let's try that way. No, it's good in there. Angle that down in there. You see, certainly polishing it. I've rounded this edge off slightly where it's been slipping. It catches on there, but that won't make any difference. So yeah, just got to get these last few bits off. I adjust it in the, um, just to give me a bit more access. Yeah, this is working well. Excellent. All right, let's carry on with it then. I can see now why the sandpaper was never going to work. So I almost forgot to mention, if you're doing anything like this, safety glasses, very important. Now, when I was working at the garage, um, I wasn't on the, on the tools, I was front of house, but the lads used things like this all the time, the other mechanics, for, for, well, for jobs like this, um, they come in various sizes. Um, now I'm using this on an electric drill, which isn't turning very fast. They'd use them on the air-driven air guns, which turn extremely quickly. Um, and for some reason, almost none of them ever wore eye protection. Um, I don't know why, if they just couldn't be bothered, or they didn't like doing it, or if they just didn't think it would ever happen to them. But we did have a few where these bits of metal would break off, and they're quite tough. You don't want these getting stuck in you. 
they'd break off and they'd get stuck in their fingers and such like or in their arm one chap managed to get one in his eye and ended up with a trip to hospital it's just really not worth it especially if you're working with something that spins even faster than this thing does so and yeah they're not expensive these were i've had these a good few years i think they were like two three pounds off ebay they're the proper deal they are ce marked they meet the required safety standards um, and you don't have to have them in yellow these came in all sorts of colors i just went with yellow just cause um, so yeah there really is no excuse for not using it other than you know you're either lazy or stupid so yeah always wear your safety goggles Right, looks like we're nearly there. Just getting this last bit off, and then we're good to go. This bit here does not want to come off. Come on, you piece of shit. Let's try something. Ah! It spins both ways, Stuart. is shiny just like new that's what we like maybe a bit rough there but that's what the gasket's for not bad not bad right i'd say that's good to go there we go that's come out brilliantly actually Every speck of that gasket is gone. Maybe a little rough here, but I don't think that's my polishing. I think that's just imperfections in the metal. That's why we have gaskets. Right. Let's go, uh, let's go make it fit to the car. I have to rinse all this swarf out as well, but that's easily done. Finally, some fucking progress. Right, let's attack this engine then. Uh, hopefully, putting the camera where it is, it's right under the bonnet. Um, will help shelter it from the wind. It's really breezy out here at the moment. Um, I suppose that's the joy of um, yeah, that's the joy of us YouTube mechanics, as I mentioned. You never see professionals resting a camera tripod on the ABS unit, so they just don't get that. You see, my concern here is getting this whopping great ass drill under there. Not ideal. I do want also do without jamming it into this power steering pipe. Oops. Safety glasses, put them on in a minute. Once I know I can get this thing in here. Alright, that'll have to do. Glasses on. Left me fucking coffee inside as well. I'm going to start on a low speed setting with this because if it jumps, there's stuff around here that I don't want this brush bashing into. Namely, this wire here, coolant hoses, fucking everything else. So I can barely see what I'm doing as well. Right. Wrong target, let's give it a try. Right, is that making any difference? into my arm. Get out of the way. Right. Coming away. I think what I'll do in a bit is get the boroscope out. It doesn't record sound but then I'll just do a voiceover for it instead. Also, my head is right next to the camera, so I bet my voice is really loud right now. Getting there. Fucking slowly. Got my coffee. Let's get in here. 
here. If I can get in now, oh, that camera angle's not going to work. That'll do that. Again, I'm going to abandon it. The wind keeps blowing in such a way that it's lifting the bonnet and threatening to pull it off the bonnet stay, which is a problem when you have your head under it. Also, whilst I'm doing all right on the corner of this bit, the other bits that require a bit more of an angle are going to be an issue because this drill is just too big for this space. I could do with a smaller one that spins faster, but again, money, always fucking money. Let's do some boroscope footage and see what I'm looking at. Alright, so as I said, there's no sound with these uh, videos that I did with the boroscope. Uh, I've actually taken six at this interval. This one I'm just trying to figure out which way up to hold it. And then I just sort of fuck it up. Uh, Alright, second video. Um, still trying to figure out which way up to hold it. There's my ugly face. There's the bonnet, we're not interested in that. Uh, oh, upside down. Oh, no, now it's the right way. Right, let's go see if we can have a look. Have a look. Hey, that's what we're looking for. Oh, no, we've lost it. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, that's next door's house. Yep, that's not relevant either. Oh, bloody hell. Ah, there we go. Right. All right, well, ah, you can see, look, it's getting cleaned off nicely. Uh, there's still a few... The black bits are the remains of the gasket that we're trying to get off. And the nice shiny bits are the bit that we've managed to clean off so far. The reason I've got six of these videos is for some reason the little app that runs the boroscope doesn't immediately save the video files. They take about half an hour to appear in the file manager on my phone. So I spent most of the day thinking that it wasn't recording them properly. Um, so then I took about 30 still images which I now don't need because the videos were there all along. Alright, so next video. Um, I don't really know what's going on. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, there, that, that's it. Get the right way up to it. Oh, let's go back again. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you can see inside that hole, giggity, it's all sort of orangey-brown. That's corrosion. As I've probably said a few times already now, yeah, I think some the previous owners of this have just been putting plain water through it, which is okay in an emergency, but you can't leave it like that. You've got to get proper antifreeze in uh, with proper anti-corrosion properties uh, what we're videoing now that was a wiring plug oh oh we're upside down again oh now yeah oh let's go back yeah all right so uh that's that's a little bit better of a view of it it's a bit too much light i probably had the leds on the end of the camera turned up too brightly for it but yeah it looks like we're making some progress here yeah that's not looking too bad next one oh we're going again we're going again Oh, oh, crap, oh, cocked it, where are we going? Oh, there we go, we're in the right place. Mm. Yeah, look at that. I didn't actually take a video of what it looked like beforehand, which would have been more useful, but never mind. You know, it's done now anyway. Oh, and then last video, um, oh, getting it the right way up, going in the right place. There we go. Yeah. Oh, look, you can see the dust flying around now. There was a lot of dust coming off of this. You don't always see it on the camera, but there was a lot of dust coming out of this engine as I was polishing it. All right, that's about it.
idea was it to put exhausts on the cars. What does that even do? It causes global warming, and that's what it does. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't have any fucking problems. Some right, so boroscope journey number two. Let's see how what progress we've made. Look at that. It's looking shiny. How shiny is that? That top bit's proper shiny. Yeah, making some progress here. Still a few black bits over on the right. The bottom edge of it's looking good too. Yeah, making some progress there. Let's carry on with it. Alright, getting there. A little bit in the top corner to do. And I think we might be ready to start bolting it together. Be good. Right, that is. Nice and shiny and smooth. One last inspection with the bar scope. I don't think I'm ready to start putting this back together. Right, third bit of bar scoping. Starting off with a video of my crotch. Won't get it the right way up, Stuart. That's the bonnet. That's not what we're trying to look at. Go on, get it in the right place. Go on. That's it. Go on. Yeah, jam it in there. Just like she likes it. Look at that. Looking proper shiny now. Mmm. Yeah, look at that. I'd say that's about ready to go. Alright, quick stop for a bite to eat because I'm getting a bit peckish. And then this lot can start going back together. Finally, some fucking progress. Perhaps. Probably not. Right, so just before we start bowling it together, we're going to apply the rust converter or rust master rust converter revolutionary apparently whatever just onto this little elbow joint here um because that is the failure point oh drop me bolts now fuck's sake that is the failure point on it and whilst this part is obviously in much better condition it would be good just to try and aid its longevity um, so yeah we're going to apply a bit of this I'm going to use a paintbrush to do it. This is an old painting one. I think I've been using it for varnishing wood. It's clean enough, but it's getting a bit old and knackered. It's going in the bin anyway, so it'll do for this job. Um, it's not ideal, but I'm not going to get out a brand new paintbrush just for one job. So, yeah, let's just do that. Give me bolts back first. Lose them. A shake. Oh, that's not good. There we go. And I'm just going to put a small amount on here. Oh, that's a bit more than I wanted. And it says in the tub one coat works in 20 minutes. It doesn't say what it actually converts the rust into, only that it converts it. I mean, it could convert it to gold, that'd be nice. Or something really expensive like petrol, that'd be nice too. Our instructions say you're meant to clear off any loose flakes of rust with these. Well, there isn't any, so I checked. There we go, it's not going to look pristine ever again. It should just help with the longevity of that part. Right, let's go on with actually putting this thing back together. Right. Where have I left my spanner set? It's right there somewhere. Right.
gasket in the front of. The top tip, make sure you line it up with the hole before you ram it in somewhere and start trying to tighten it up. Giggity. Alright, let's try hooking up some of these coolant hoses now, shall we? Start with that big one, because why not? Now the bit that I first thought was leaking and turns out wasn't and sent us down this fucking dark alleyway. That can be reconnected now. I have actually broken the fucking hose clamp for it. it just well it was rusted to shit and it just broke apart as I took it off. But the plan at the, t at the moment is just to get it to a point where the cooling system is sealed and I can turn the engine not turn it over, turn it on, start it, and then check for leaks. So we'll do that before we put too much back together, like on the um, power steering pump. Because if it's leaking, I don't want to do a full job of reassembling it just to find out I've got to do it all over again. Because I'm still worried that gasket's not going to be the right one. Seems to be a good fit though. It's on there at least. Right, so that's the gist of the cooling system back together. Just a quick tidy up because there's bloody tools everywhere at the moment. 
double check everything and then I'm thinking before we go any further we're going to try filling this with coolant and starting the engine it's probably going to go absolutely batshit because half its sensors are disconnected but that shouldn't stop it starting and what I want to do is try and pressurise the cooling system just to make sure nothing fucking leaks out some of these tools out of the way and then we'll do that right so according to the manual this takes six liters of coolant so we've got uh, two one gallon tubs of it just 3.78 liters each so I'm fill this via the radiator I did try and look up what would be the correct coolant for this, but I got nothing but conflicting information. And then I just resigned to, to myself, well, there's actually fuck all in it, so why does it fucking matter? I don't have a funnel. I used to have a funnel. The dog ate it. Didn't you, Bella? Hmm? safe to do right now. Before anyone says, oh, it's going to eat all your seals and your pipes, A, no, it fucking won't, and B, even if it does, well, then I'll have more stuff to fix. I like working on this car. I may not look it, but I do. Concerned about this, it looks to be leaking out of that gasket. Oh, fuck's sake. Let's get the ball scope and have a proper look. Right, last bit of ball scoping. Let's see what we can see. That's the wrong bit. Where is it? There it is. And there's the bright green drip. Fucking great. Alright, well, that's a disappointing end to the day. It's fucking leaking out that gasket. You can see it dripping there, look. Let me get my hand under here. Let's see. It's got that sweet smell to it. It's definitely coolant. It's definitely coming out. Fuck's sake. I thought going to the Mazda dealership. He showed me the diagram. It's the right gasket, but still fucking doesn't work. I'm going to have a look online. There looks to be paper versions of that metal gasket. Um, just going to check part numbers. And what we're going to do is we're just going to swap it out for one of those. And if it still leaks with a paper one on, um, I'm just going to get a shit ton of sealant and block it up that way. But that is a disappointing end to the day. There's no point going any further with it because I've only going to take it back off. And we're probably going to lose... That entire bottle of coolant as well, so that's wasted material. Fuck's sake. <laughs>